Today we are trying to distinguish between a sample of cow's milk and soy milk using nothing but the enzyme lactase and glucose test strips, no tasting allowed. So here we have it, the enzyme lactase is added to each beaker of milk and in 10 minutes each beaker is tested for the presence of glucose. And the results show that the soy milk yielded no positive test but the cow's milk which contains lactose produced glucose in the presence of lactase. Let's extend this activity now into several questions and the first one is to outline an investigation into the effect of enzyme concentration on the rate of lactose hydrolysis by lactase. So first we make several concentrations of the enzyme using a serial dilution technique where we start with a stock solution of 1% and then we take a certain volume of that and dilute that with an equal volume of water which would give us a 0.5% solution of the enzyme. Once we have the 0.5% solution of the enzyme, then we can continue in the dilution series with another 10 out of the 0.5 beaker added to 10 milliliters of distilled water. And that would give us a 0.25%. Continue this dilution two or three more times to get several different concentrations of the enzyme. And once we have all of our enzyme concentrations made up, then we have independent variable. But what about the dependent variable? How would we quantify the rate at which this enzyme works? Lactose breaks up into glucose and galactose when it is catalyzed by the enzyme lactase. So this hydrolysis produces glucose which can be used as a measure of the rate of the process of breakdown. So by taking glucose concentrations at time intervals we would be able to quantify which enzyme concentration produces the fastest reaction. So we can measure glucose every five minutes with the strips for 30 minutes. And this would give us a rate in milligrams of glucose per liter per minute. Returning to our second question, which is to sketch the graph that you would expect. And this graph should look something like this, with enzyme concentration on the x-axis and rate on the y-axis. Now, what's the reason for this graph? Well, enzymes work in really small amounts with large amount of substrate all around. So any small change in the amount of enzyme is likely to have an increase in the rate of the reaction. Enzymes work in small amounts. So what then is the meaning of enzyme substrate specificity? Each enzyme has this unique part of its structure called the active site and the substrate fits into the active site and then undergoes some changes which creates a preferential state that allows the actual reaction to be facilitated easily and in this case that's hydrolysis of lactose the active site on lactase is unique for lactose so any other substrate would not fit into the active site. Enzymes and substrates are like a lock and a key to use a simplified analogy. Finally, we suggest how you would use these materials on a source of heat or a strong acid or a base to demonstrate the effects of enzyme denaturation. So here we have a representation of the enzyme with its substrate 
enzymes are complex globular proteins and in the presence of heat they're relatively weak hydrogen bonds tend to fall apart very easily and when this happens the complex globular or tertiary structure of the enzyme is disrupted and with this the specific conformation or shape of the active site changes rendering the enzyme inactive and with a different active site the substrate does not fit and the enzyme is denatured. pH can have a similar effect by introducing extremes of hydrogen and hydroxide ions they disrupt ionic bonds if ionic bonds get disrupted the enzyme is denatured and if the enzyme is denatured no glucose can be produced